All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be slightly different than all my other videos in the sense that this is going to be going over a project and more of a lessons and um, research type video. So essentially my goal in this was to learn Rasa. Um, I had heard about it, I had never touched it before. Um, I want to learn the kind of uh, use cases for it, as well as also explore just kind of like how a hybrid model with Rasa and um, a GPT based LLM would work. So in this video, I just kind of go want to go over the goal of why I made it, like what was the reasoning for it, what I want to explore with this project, kind of how I went about thinking about the Rasa chatbot since this was my first time um, interacting with Rasa, kind of the system architecture that I use as well as kind of the lessons that I learned throughout this whole process. So it may be useful in the future um, if you guys are building your own. So the use case that I wanted to tailor this chatbot around was a real estate chatbot. Essentially, I had a lot of clients that wanted real estate chatbots. However, they had a lot of data that they didn't want to put on these third-party chatbot builders and et cetera. And so I wanted to check out uh, Rasa for kind of just having a localized database as well as a localized integration um, and a localized knowledge base. And so that's kind of where the Rasa real estate chatbot idea came around. And so the goal of this was to explore the capabilities and building an NLU based chatbot with um, an N, uh, with an LLM integration. So sort of a hybrid model. And so the first thing I did was just kind of plan out um, the general functionality of what I wanted to do. So Rasa is NLU based, so it has intents and entities kind of like any chatbot framework. Um, and so the first thing that I wanted to do was a property search. So the chatbot should be able to search and filter properties based on criteria such as location, price, number of bedrooms and bathrooms. And then these are the general intents that um, I came up with and then the entities um, that I wanted to store. And um, these are just extra entities and intents that I want to build out, which I haven't gone to yet. And so generally the main functionality that currently exists is that you can have a bunch of properties. You can ask for a property um, based on certain criteria such as the um, location, price range, uh, bedrooms, etc. So yeah, you have a list of properties. You can filter that list with those certain fields. You can get more information about it and then you can just generally ask questions to an LLM um, about that property. And so this is kind of kind of the broad aspect of what I want to explore with this project and uh, we'll get into the details of how everything worked. So now I have the kind of chatbot open here on, on a window. I have the Rasa server running uh, as an API and I'm just gonna show you a brief demo of what the chatbot essentially does. So here you can just go ahead and come and say hi. It'll recognize the intent and just ask, tell you what it can do. So you can find a property or contact an agent. So in this case, we'll just say find a property. So the good thing about Rasa is you can have as many intents as you want and you can kind of frame the intents and train the model uh, with your specific intents that you think the user is gonna ask. The downside to that is that you do need to come up with all those intents and train the model yourself. So here it's asking us to describe the property. So I'll just say looking for a house with three bedrooms, or let's just say two bedrooms, two bedrooms in Toronto. So here I just basically queried, I'm um, looking for a house with this thing. Now Rasa figures out that it's missing a certain uh, entity that I want to include, which is the price. And so here we can just say the price is 200K. What this will then do is it'll contact the action server and it will go ahead and query a uh, simple SQL database and get a um, a property that kind of just generally matches the fields that we enter, in, entered in before. And so here you can see it found property ID number four with this address, uh, with this price, with two bedrooms and in Mississauga. So it wasn't able to find a property in Toronto mainly because I have only like five properties in this database since this is just a simple project. So there's really not much data to go off of. And then it found the property price for 244,000, even though I said 200K, because there's a general limit that it's, uh, or a, a boundary that it's searching um, from. So it found this property and now what we can do is, so we can go ahead and say, I want to know more about property four. In this case is ID four. So you had to identify the property that you're talking about. And now this is where the LLM part comes into play, where now you can pretty much ask any open-ended question um, to the language model. Now this language model is trained on a um, on this PDF right here, or it uses GPT 3.5 and it uses um, retrieval augmented generation with this PDF right here. So this simply has every single property ID and then um, it has just a little bit of details as well as the agent and then the, um, the, 
the information about that property. So in this case, we're querying about property four. So it should go ahead and look into this knowledge base, which is already uh, uh, created as an embedding uh, model uh, with Langchain, and then go ahead and take this information, send it over to GPT 3.5, and then return back with uh, an answer. So here we'll just ask, uh, you can see we have this description here. Um, can you describe uh, this property? So it takes a minute here. It's probably querying, uh, um, it's going through that embedding model and then getting that, getting the correct chunks and then sending that over to GPT 3.5 and then coming up with this answer. So here you can see this two bedroom residence in Mississauga, exclude a cozy charm, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not sure if it took that directly from um, the description or it took a little bit here and there um, from from this. So essentially it's, it's working correctly. And so you can ask it questions about the property here. I only have a very limited amount of information in, in that uh, PDF, but you know, you can also ask who is the agent in charge. So here it should recognize that we're talking about um, property number four from our previous query. And then uh, it tells us that the agent in charge is Jack, which is in fact correct. So this is the general use case. This is what I got working so far. And uh, this is all completely custom built and also completely um, handled locally, which is really the main advantageous part that a lot of clients were looking for was for their data not to be stored in a different thing. So all this is handled locally. All the property information is in a uh, SQL database. And then the knowledge base with this um, PDF uh, is in a locally stored embedding model. So now that we've seen kind of how this use case right here works, um, I'm just going to break down the general system architecture of what I have um, that makes this thing work right now. So essentially I have the, obviously the Rasa chat uh, side right there, which that has an NLU model and intents. So basically that NLU model looks something like this, where you basically have an intent and then you have a lot of examples going over what that intent actually is. So in this case, it's like, here are all the examples for the houses. And here are, um, you know, like the examples for what the user might input when they're looking for a property. You need to bake all of this into uh, your NLU model. And so that's essentially what this guy is. So you have your NLU model with intents. You have your NLU model with intents and entities. That has a separate action server. So Rasa has something called an action server, which is essentially like a backend server where, um, you know, once it identifies an intent to take certain actions or to trigger certain things like contacting the LLM, that's handled on the action server. So that's essentially a backend uh, for Rasa chatbots. And then that's connected to a very simple SQL Lite database, which just pretty much has um, those properties stored. Um, and here I only have six properties. As I mentioned, it's very, very, um, small, but yeah, it just has a price, some images, uh, the agent, and then the name, which is really the address and then the location. And so that's connected to a SQLite database. That's how that um, property questioning function works. And then we have a Langchain integration over here where we have an embedding model, which pretty much just uh, is this PDF right here. It's converted into an embedding model that is stored locally. And then we basically do retrieval augmented generation with Langchain um, and interact with GPT 3.5 to then go ahead and answer any of those um, questions about the property directly from that PDF. That embedding model is stored right here in the text embeddings um, and it looks basically like this. And for that, I just use the Chroma vector database in Langchain. So yeah, that's basically that. That's the general project. And now I'll just quickly go over some lessons that I've learned um, kind of going through this process of building this and just exploring Rasa. So Rasa is generally great for chatbots where you have less open-ended questions, um, which is where more of a language, uh, a large language model shines um, and where the user input is predictable. So as I showed you before, that NLU model requires a lot of training and that's kind of what guarantees its success is like how much training data do you have in that um, where, on what the user is going to input. And so that's very, very important for these models uh, is that training data. And that's kind of something that I learned coming from the large language model world to like traditional, um, traditional chatbot world. Um, yeah, so it heavily relies on that model and intent classification. It is not obviously as broad as a large language model. However, it is very accurate when trained and it doesn't hallucinate as large language models do, which is, you know, something that some clients are looking for where they kind of don't want these unpredictable um, responses from these large language models. You can use a hybrid approach kind of like what I did here 
where you have both the NLU side as well as a large language model kind of working in tandem to create um, create the functionality that you want. And yeah, other than that, I mean, generally, Rasa was a good learning curve. Um, I think it's it's quite interesting what you can build with it. Uh, I think there's easier options uh, for faster development. It took a lot of time to just kind of understand what each of the files mean and how they interact. You have your domain file, you have an NLU, you have your action server. So it, it's quite a broad um, kind of framework. Uh, however, you know, something like Google's dialogue flow might be a lot easier to program with and a lot easier to build chatbots for, uh, for custom chatbots as opposed to Rasa, for example. And yeah, so hopefully you found this video informative and useful. Uh, Rasa will be something that I definitely learn more about in the future. And uh, leave me a comment if you want to see more videos like this about, you know, things that I kind of check out and learn. If you're a company or a business that is looking for a chatbot solution, whether it's in Rasa or some other chatbot, please go ahead and book a free 15 minute discovery call down in the comments below. My agency Paragon AI helps build all sorts of automation solutions, especially integrated with large language models such as GPT, um, kind of like what you saw in this video. And so go ahead and book a free 15 minute call and we can discuss uh, what you want to build there. Other than that, leave a like and I will see you guys in the next video.